clever the priest. First he conquers the boys, now he wants to conquer us. Come on. If he were a general, we'd be ready to die for him. Giuseppe, Giuseppe, how are you? I ache all over. I don't remember a thing. You fell from quite a height. We must thank the Lord for saving your life. It isn't true that God saves our lives. Nobody saves our lives. Giuseppe was lucky. But last week, a friend of mine fell off the scaffolding and died on the spot. We worked like animals for more than 12 hours a day, and the master exploits us and becomes rich at the cost of our lives. And then you priests come along and tell us that we should thank God? I'm sorry, Father. I just won't go for that. It is not God you should direct your anger at. I don't. I get angry with you priests who do nothing but look on. And you, Father, you're just like the rest of them. Forgive him, Father Bosco. No, Giuseppe. Your brother is not entirely wrong. <laughs> That is not a little thing. <coughs> no, it's not enough, Father Capasso. I believe the Lord is asking me to do more for them. The Lord is also asking you to take care of yourself, Giovanni. But how can I think about myself when there are boys oppressed by hardship, forced to sell themselves for a piece of bread to unscrupulous masters? You've always been stubborn, my son. But this time I'm asking you to obey me. As your spiritual father, I'm ordering you to go back to the country and stay there till you recover. and some bread, you will feel better. You are spoiling me. The love of family is the best cure. If I think of the way I treated you, I didn't understand you, Giovanni. I thought yours were only illusions. God used you too, as an instrument to lead me where he wanted to. Now my place is with my boys, while yours is here. Mm -hmm. With your beautiful wife. Shall we tell them? Come on, Teresa. You're keeping us on pins and needles. We're going to have a baby. <laughs> a baby? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a baby. Teresa. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> So Father Capasso is running the oratory, while poor Father Bosco is in the countryside with his mother. This is the right time, before he can influence them any further. Hmm. Well done. Keep your eyes open and report back to me as soon as possible. Yes, Your Excellency. you want to 
to ask. I must go back. I must return to Baldoko. My boys are expecting me. But Giovanni, you have not fully recovered yet. Mother, I understood something important while I was here at home. And I owe this to you. I know what my boys really lack. A family. A true family like ours. Like Antonio's child will have. It is the Lord that shows you the way, Giovanni. Not me. You are in his grace. And you could do so much. Would you like to come with me to Baldoka? What? Are you joking? Giovanni, you can't ask this of me. My life is here. There will be a new baby in our family. Anyhow, what could I ever do for them? What you've always done. Raise and love my children. Just like you did your own. Who could do it better than you? taking advantage of the fact that Father Bosco isn't here. Who said Father Bosco isn't here? He's back. Hello, boys. sold me to a farmer in the market square but I ran away and came to the city you will sleep here you may stay as long as you need to Giovanni excuse us how will we manage where will we sleep there's only two beds mother he can sleep um, in the kneading trough in the kneading trough <laughs> Giovanni, the boy's gone. And he took my blankets with him. I'm sure he needs them more than we do. We gave him everything we had, and he fooled us. We trusted him too much. We have to trust them, Mother. We must give all needy boys a bed to sleep on, and a home. How can we manage? Where will we put them all? Giuseppe fell because he was too tired. He was negligent. It's his own fault that he fell, Father. Working hours are observed on my site, Father. What are you talking about, Mr. Semperi? These boys don't even have a contract. Dear Father, if they don't work enough, my accounts don't balance. And if my accounts don't balance, I'll have to shut the place down and they'll all end up in the street. But you cannot balance your accounts at the cost of getting the boys killed. Hmm? Well, 
spoken, Father. Go preach in the church, and not in the building yards. And you all get back to work. You two, move. Wait, Giuseppe. Wait. Come with me. I'll take care of you. Good. Take him with you. Father Vasco's right. I'm not going to stay here and die while his master fills his wallet. I'm going with Father Vasco. Wait for me, Father Vasco. I'm going with you. Yeah, the priest is right. Enough of us being exploited. Hey, wait a second. Go ahead. Know. I'll find a thousand more like you. Get out of here. No, better. Get out of here. Get out of here. Much Come better. On. Come on, guys. Oh, what do you think you can find another job? Here. Let's get I'll give them work, Let's go. Mr. Zen Perry. Oh, yes. Hey, what do you have to do, Father? Hey, wait for me. They'll all be altar boys? I don't know. We'll come up with something with the help of God. Come on, boys. Damn priest. So, you want me to teach my trade to the boys? Yes. We will set up a printing workshop. You'll teach the boys, and they will work for you in return. You will have young and diligent labor. They won't cost you much, and they'll do a good job, but I don't want them to work more than eight hours a day. Eight hours? You must be joking. The minimum shift is 12 hours, everywhere. Our print shop will be different. You will have to comply with this apprenticeship contract I've drafted. By working fewer hours, the boys will work better. And you will see that your prestige, whew, it will grow. I don't know, Father. I really don't know. You told me once that your mother was devoted to St. Francis of Sales. Hmm. So, you think it's a good deal? I say that St. Francis of Sales and your mother would be truly happy. For Father Bosco, I'd smash his face in. I don't even know what he's doing here. He likes revolutionaries, but Father Bosco doesn't mind. After all, he also took us in the way we were. Boys, everybody wash their hands. The food's on the table. There's food. Let's go. Oh, yes. Come on. 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 Dominica, what's wrong? Are you unwell? I'm doing fast and penitence. Will you help me? Help you do what? You said the Lord wants us to be saintly. Huh. I want to be a saint. Fasting and penitence are not suited for your age. But I was also doing it for you and the others. What are you fasting for? Your stomach is always empty anyway. Here in Valdoka. Being holy means keeping very happy. Domenico, wherever your brothers are, wherever your aspirations may be, wherever your duty is, wherever, wherever you find what you love, that, that is the place of your encounter with Christ. Holiness is in everything you do, if you put your heart into it. And you, you 
have a big heart, Domenico. Yes, Father Bosco. I understand. Well, let us go and eat. Come on. Very good. I knew we would understand one another. These are the leaflets I need to find at the print shop. But the most important thing is your witness. You are to say, Father Bosco wanted them printed. Father Bosco wanted them printed? Exactly. Now, here's an advance payment. You'll get the rest when the job is done. You try to cheat me, and I'll lock you up for the rest of your miserable little life. Business. And you try to be more polite. The air in here is different from what you're used to breathing. Enough, Giovanni, enough. When a friend arrives, we have to greet him with love, without prejudice. Is that what Jesus told his apostles to do? Good for you, Giuseppe. Yes, we should love one another like Jesus loved us. It's a hard commandment to follow, especially when certain people are around. Well, now, listen to this story. One of the two sons was a good, conscientious boy, while the other left home slamming the door. Many years later, the rebel son returned home. His father greeted him with open arms and threw a huge party. The other son started complaining. Father, I've always been good and loyal, and you have never celebrated me. His father replied, my son, you are always with me, and whatever I have belongs to you, too. We had to celebrate and rejoice, for your brother was dead, and now he has come back to life. He was lost, and he has been found. End of story. Welcome into our family, Bruno. May God bless you all. Good night, my sons. Am I disturbing you, Giovanni? No, Mother. You never disturb me. I was thanking the Lord for everything we are now beginning. I thought we had done quite a bit. We must ensure these boys a future. I will not be at peace with myself until I have understood how to do so. Even if it means incurring yet more debts? Don't worry, Mama. Sooner or later, the Lord will come to our rescue. Hmm. I don't know how we've managed to pay so many of our debts so far. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your wedding ring? Where is it? You sold it. At least our boys could eat for a week. That's what really counts. Mama. <laughs> Remember what I told you? that I would never set foot in your house if you became rich. <laughs> That's why I stayed poor. <laughs> to have you always by my side.
I'm glad to see you again, Father Bosco. Thank you for accepting my invitation. I am the one who thanks you, madam. Isn't that the priest from Valdoco who takes in stragglers? Regretfully, Countess, yes. For some time now, he's been in the habit of coming to beg in the drawing rooms of polite society. Come on, I'd like to introduce you to Countess Ranieri. She's very wealthy, and she might be interested in your cause. Don't say. A Countess, dearest, I'd like to introduce Father Bosco to you. The Marchesa has spoken very highly of you. I see a certain resemblance between you and the Countess. I bet you're two are sisters. <laughs> what are you saying, Father Bosco? She's my daughter, Christina. Then may the Lord keep you this way for many years to come. Thank you. I welcome your good wishes. If you're as good with the boys as you are with the ladies, you're going to be extremely successful in your work, Father Bosco. On my part, if there's anything I can do to assist you. As a matter of fact, we have just set up a printing workshop. What a wonderful idea. Come with me and let's discuss it. That priest foreman's hatred and rebellion. With his subversive ideas, he managed to lure half of my workers away. He isn't well, just luring our workers away. Now he even puts them to work in his own print shop in Valdoco. That is a dangerous precedent. Imagine what would happen if workers suddenly got it into their heads to fight for their rights or to work on their own. Please, gentlemen, don't worry. I'm dealing with the situation. against the misrule of Turin, against his officials' inability and corruption. A new sun is on the horizon. Down with King Carl Albert Sophia. Long live the Republic. What do you intend to do with those leaflets? It's none of your business. And if you tell Father Bosco, you'll regret it. Because I'll make you pay for it. Why are you standing there? Everything okay? I'm helping Bruno read a letter. Well, hurry up. It's our shift in the print shop. Father Bosco trusts you so much. He loves you like a son. Whatever you do, I'm sure you'll do the right thing. Get out, and keep your mouth shut. Disturbing you, perhaps? Not at all. But we would have prepared to greet you had we known. I'm sorry. You'll have to accept us as we are. That's exactly why we're here. To see you as you are. Everyone, write the letter A. Write neatly and don't scribble down like you usually do. Stand up, boys. There's a visitor. class isn't very large. Along with reading and writing, we have arithmetic and music lessons. These boys are thirsty for knowledge. Well, that's admirable. The whole town is talking about your laboratories. Can we see them? Yes. This way. These big sheets are called signatures. First you fold them in half, then in half again, and then one more time. That's good, McKella. That's very good. Now you, try to do the same thing. Catechism, education, and a good trade. Under the protection of a good contract, this is the urgent program I wish to carry out for my boys. You sound like a politician. No, Excellency. I'm only a priest. I'm not involved in politics. 
These days, one can't afford to be neutral in politics, Reverend. If I must make a choice, Your Excellency, I choose the politics of our father. something in particular, Excellency? Despite your professing to have no interest in politics, rumor has it that this print shop is a breeding ground for revolutionary ideas. And the presence of this boy doesn't help matters. I can guarantee that this boy, even though he has been in and out of prison throughout his life, has a sincere and generous soul. That is, unless you know him well enough to prove me wrong. My guards will be leaving your oratory today, but you should know that Milan and Venice have risen up, and if Piedmont declares war on Austria, I wonder how the Pope will react. The Holy Father has always stated that he is in favor of the unification of Italy. But I can't believe he'll take sides against Austria. Then there is every likelihood that the people will turn against you, priests. And then who's going to defend you? Hmm? The Providence? <laughs> have left the residence and decided to support the rebels. We must follow history. That's what they said. Giovanni, we must get the boys away from the oratory before they arrive. To go where? No. We are staying. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed, blessed art thou blessed among women. Blessed, 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 blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, 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 Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. grace, blessed are thou among women, blessed is the of Jesus. Holy
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Father Bosco asked us to pray. It's the only useful thing we can do right now. Take it out on me, but leave the boys alone. All right, we'll take it out on you. dangerous to stay here. Let's go. Giuseppe and I are staying. Aren't we, Giuseppe? I don't know. I'd like to stay, but Carlo, what should I do? Only a coward would leave now. Only a coward would stay. I'm sick of rotting in here, while history is being written out there. Father Bosco, I appreciate you, and I'm grateful for everything you've taught me. But I also feel the need to take part in the struggle for freedom. I also believe in freedom, Carlo. That's why I tell you and all the others that anyone who wants to leave this home is free to do so. This is your home. None of you will ever find the door closed. Carlo. I'm not coming with you. I'm staying with Father Bosco. Now, reading lesson. Father Bosco. What is it? Sooner or later, they will come back. Our family is not over. Yes, Dominica. Yes. We must have faith. Giovanni. Instead, you are just as I remembered you. Only the cassock has changed, Monsignor. You'd be a bishop by now had you followed my advice. It's a good thing I didn't, seeing my horrible temper. Thank you. As you probably know, the Holy See brought me back from England to draft a report on the grave problems the Turin Diocese is facing. I wanted to hear your opinion on the matter. These are difficult times for everybody. Our oratory risked a lot too. Many of the boys left, and our enemies are increasing in numbers. When we make such radical choices, we always risk vexing someone. You should be careful not to swim against the tide so excessively. Lorenzo, Christ swam against the tide to stir the hearts rather than letting them be filled with resignation. By the way, Many of our seminarians have left, and our diocese needs priests. Do any of your boys have the vocation by any chance? Well, actually, I don't know. Maybe there is. There is one, but I don't want to force him into it. No. Nobody is able to inflame the hearts of our youth as you do, Giovanni. It is a great gift and a great responsibility as well. Perhaps you should place this gift at the surface of the entire church. Domenico, come here. Take the bread to the table. Wait, this is for you. Otherwise, you'll be left with nothing as usual. Thank you, Mother Margarita. Mm.
There's no more bread. Look, there's still one left. Thank you, Dominico. Ah, oh, my sons. I bet you're still hungry. I know, I know. <laughs> guess, guess what I have in my hand? Ah, uh, I have an apple. An apple? Oh, oh, an apple! Oh, 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 please, 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 Dominico! Thank you. Yes, but first you eat. my trembling hands will no longer be able to hold your cross. Sweet Jesus, show me mercy. When my soul shall appear before you, please, greet me into your merciful arms, O oh Father. Tell my boys. Let's go. But your excellency. What about the rest of the inspection? Never mind about the inspection.
will never see him again. None of us will ever see him again. Why did God take him from us? I can't accept that. God's design is mysterious at times, but I'm sure Domenico's still with us. Who do you think you are? Look, Domenico wasn't only your friend. He was so good. So generous. Always ready to help people. He was the best of all of us. He was. He was. He was a saint. That is why the Lord gave him to us. So that we could follow his example. But how can we now that he's gone? If we follow his example, Domenico will live with us. In our actions, in our thoughts, in our hearts. We haven't lost Domenico. All things we love cannot come to an end. This is the certainty of our faith. Giovanni, what are you doing at this time of night? I have understood, Mama. I have finally understood. Our family needs stronger roots. You're here. So are you. But what we have built must continue to exist. Domenico's death made me understand that the Lord is asking me to found a congregation. A congregation that will allow the voice to continue, even without me. Even without me. Even without me. Any news from Carlo? Yes. He wrote me a letter about a month ago from Milan. He should be back soon. There's an outbreak of cholera there. There have been some cases near Turin. Good morning, boys. Well, for the time being, I called only you boys and not the others, as you were among the first to become part of our family. Did, did we do something wrong? <laughs> no. No, Giovanni, on the contrary. I want our family to become more stable and united. And above all, I want it to stay united, even when I'm gone. You will never die, Father Bosco. <laughs> I will never die if you become the Father Boscos of tomorrow. So I have written down a series of rules that we have always observed here by tradition. But now, now is the time to move forward and to constitute something official by requesting the approval of the Holy See in honor of St. Francis of Sales, who protects us. We will call ourselves Salesians. From this moment on, whoever chooses to can begin to live according to the rules of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Think it over, my sons. Go now. you going, Michele? I'm with you, Father Bosco. Are you sure? Yes, Father Bosco. Do you remember when I did this? What did you mean? It meant that in life, you and I would always share half of what we have. Joys, responsibilities, grief. It means we will share everything. Vegetables, candles, fruits, the baker, 6,500 lira. I'm dead. Come in. Giuseppe. Father Bosco, I've come to say goodbye. I'm leaving. Where are you going? This isn't the place for me. I don't feel like staying here any longer. Well, if you want to go, go. But remember, if you need anything at all, I'm here. I'm here for you. I'm very fond of you. What is it? I don't really want to leave. 
faith is not strong enough, I will never be what you want me to be. <laughs> Giuseppe, I don't want anything from you. If you don't want to become a priest, well, then, then it means that the Salesians will also count on lay members in their numbers. So, what do you say? I'm aware that the activities of some priests have caused you problems. However, I'm certain that you also deploy initiatives like Minister Ratazzi's and Kabawar's government. I mean the project of dissolving religious orders. Well, the minister is right, Monsignor. We cannot leave things as they are if we wish to achieve a modern state. Your government has repeatedly stated the principle of a free church for a free state. This bill is a violation of that principle. Not at all. It's simply a reform, that's all. A reform, incidentally, that is met with a widespread approval. The church's power has been a threat to the state for too long. It cannot go on. I think Funding the congregation of the Salesians is the best thing you can do to guarantee the future of the oratory. Before submitting the rules to the Holy See, I need your help and your advice, Father. And yours too, Lorenzo. This is not exactly what I had in mind when I asked you if there were any vocations among the boys. However, now we have an entirely different problem. My advice is to give up the idea to you. What are you talking about, Lorenzo? The government is about to approve a bill that provides for the dissolution of religious orders and the confiscation of ecclesiastical property. This is not the time to found an order, Giovanni. The church needs to be united and not branch out even further. But they can't approve this bill. It will be approved, and the king will be forced to sign it. I'll go and see him about this. No, Giovanni. The Holy See has undertaken all the necessary diplomatic actions. Your initiative has already caused a few problems with the institutions. I see. Our congregation will never come to life. <laughs> calls upon all citizens and all institutions in caring for the sick and bearing the dead. The prefect is crazy. If he thinks people will do what he wants, I'm going straight home and locking myself in. If some of you feel like coming with me to the hospitals and the homes of the sick, together we can carry out a good action that will please the Lord. We cannot keep the gifts the Lord has given us underground. Now, now is the time to give to others. I don't want to catch cholera. You're right, Andrea. It's too risky. I promise. 
us. That if you put yourselves in God's grace and commit no mortal sins, I promise you that none of you will catch cholera. So, what do you say? We're ready. Gabrielle and I are going back to the hospital. You hold the front over here. And don't worry. The Virgin Mary will watch over you. Mariella tired herself out, taking care of all of us, washing us and feeding us. You'll get better. You'll see. <laughs> You're one of Father Bosco's boys, aren't you? Yes. I doubt that you'll manage to get me out of trouble this time too but thank you anyway don't thank me yet you'll thank me when you get better i don't know your name bruno <laughs> we managed to save an entire family at molini you know, Mama Margarita, the sick in the city are in need of everything. There was a man today who didn't even have a sheet to cover himself with. Take this to your patient. I don't think the Lord will mind. Good morning. May I help you? I come from the Vatican, and I have a message for Father Bosco. He's away, helping the sick. Also, Prefect Clementi has become ill and has asked for him. think that a man I esteem for his intelligence and strength is now giving me an opportunity. I did what I thought was right. No. That's not true. I knew I was wrong. I just didn't have the courage to admit it. Your sincerity is greater than any mistakes you may have made. Don't tire yourself, Prefect. Father 
Bosco. Your institution must survive. Now that your bill has been approved, I truly don't see how you must set up a society. It will be governed by the laws of the state. It will pay taxes. It will be a society of free citizens. And would it be approved then? Salis ex emilisis nostris. If I managed to set up my congregation, I will owe it all to you. Providence is, as usual, unpredictable. You have outdone me, Excellency. You have managed to change your heart much more than I have. I wish I could change places. We will see each other again, Excellency. We will. I pray you. Hear my confession. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The rain and the cold weather are beginning to produce their effects. The cases of cholera are diminishing. Thank God. Well, I better get going to the printer shop. Father Bosco. Bruno. This is Mariella. She'd like to give us a hand at the oratory. That's fine. But I know you. Yes, Father Bosco. At the refuge that day, you told me to look up. I wanted to thank you. No, I'm the one who thanks you for following my advice. Come with me. Come. Mariella, this is my mother, and the mother of all my boys. I'm very happy to meet you. So am I. Do you really want to help us here? Yes, Father Bosco. Think twice, my child. Here you know where you start, but you never know when you finish. <laughs> Sit down, please. Have you fallen in love? Me? Uh, no. She's not my girlfriend. We're just friends. You shouldn't be ashamed, Bruno. What could ever be more beautiful than having a family? Lorenzo, how are you? Giovanni, I have a letter for you. Ah, uh, from the Vatican. Bruno. Yes. Michele. Your fame must have even reached Rome by now. The boys took care of the cholera victims without becoming ill, as you have promised them. The people consider you a saint. father Lorenzo the Holy Father is inviting me to Rome Providence is surely giving us a great hand if I may give you a word of advice wait until you hear what he wants to see you about and don't be so obstinate with this idea of the congregation don't give the impression you want to exploit your fame huh no 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 yes 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 thank you sorry Boys! Boys! Mother! The Holy Father's inviting me to Rome! Rome, Saint In Peter. my dream, the lady told me, not with your fist, but with meekness. And in my dream, I started to cry. I asked the lady to speak clearly, and she said, you will understand everything in time. Only now, do I understand the dream I had when I was a child? Your mission is to show the world that it's possible to be good Christians and good citizens at the same time, and that it is possible to help needy youth without stepping on anyone's toes. Yes, Holy Father. And it's why I have decided to name you Monsignor. Me, a Monsignor. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you. But 
What would happen if I returned to my boys dressed like a Monsignor? They wouldn't recognize me. And people, people would think I'm rich. And no more alms. No. It's best for me to remain simply Father Bosco. I think so too. And that is precisely the answer I expected from you. Holy Father, I would like to take this opportunity to mention a project that is very dear to me. And that means everything for my boys. A roof, a house, foundations. The Congregation of the Salesians. I am aware that these are hard times, but we have found a formula that would allow our existence. Each member of the congregation will have a dual status, religious for the church and free citizen for the state. Yes, I've read your proposal and I'm convinced that this is the right way. You must fulfill your project. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Father. Let me profit from your wisdom on another point. We are about to name a new Archbishop for Turin, and I'd like you to help me in my choice. This is too great an honor. If I ask this of you, it's because I hold you in high esteem. I, I would certainly suggest Monsignor Fassati. I'm told he's a man uh, of ardent character. Yes, Holy Father. That is also why he's the right choice. Nobody holds the interest of the church and Turin at heart as much as he does. Proceed with your congregation, Father Bosco. Your rule must be studied by a committee before it is approved. It'll take time. Good morning, Your Excellency. What else have they written now? Regarding the nomination of the new Archbishop of Turin, Holy See has followed Father Bosco's suggestion. The latter has been expressly convened to Rome. Throw that paper away. Yes, Your Eminence. I'll show them how wrong they are. I certainly don't want to be Father Bosco's deputy in Turin. May the Lord strip you of the old clothes and clothe you with new ones, Michele and Giovanni, so that you may become new men, created according to God's heart and justice, in truth and in holiness. Benedica vos, omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. When are you two getting married? Soon, I hope. Bruno. How does it feel, boys? I'm happy. Very happy. Good. Always remember to get them to love you rather than fear you. If you are to correct someone's behavior, tell them that you are only interested in their well-being. It's not enough to love boys. They must feel they are loved. And this is the great secret to win their hearts. We've learned Father Bosco's secret by now. Reason, religion, and love. <laughs> Bravo. I didn't waste my time with you boys. As long as you don't give yourself airs with your new robes, that's fine. Ah, they will be able to give themselves airs when their robes are full of patches. <laughs>
Shouldn't your seminarians be studying over books rather than spending their time on carpentry? <laughs> Lorenzo, I learned much more by being with the boys than by bending over books. That is your personal experience, but my task is to reorganize and fill seminaries once again. We urgently need seminarians and priests in our diocese. You're asking me to give up my boys for the diocesan seminaries? I see. But we, the Celsians, are an autonomous congregation acknowledged by the church. Acknowledged, yes, but not approved yet. In any case, you're also under my jurisdiction. Therefore, what I ask of you is to obey your bishop. I cannot do without my boys. In that case, the Salzian congregation refuses to acknowledge my jurisdiction. The congregation of the Salzians is accountable to the Holy Father. This is yet to be established, Giovanni. and his funny forest boys. An obscurinist bishop opposes the work of an enlightened priest. Go ahead and see what it says on the next page. Archbishop Vassetti prevents Father Bosco from advancing in his work. The dispute concerns the formation of clerics whom Vassetti would like to take to his seminary. Actually, the pamphlet is anonymous. Come on, we know full well who wrote it. He even has this beautiful workshop to print these slanderous accusations. I want to know who wrote this, and I want to know now. Father, I swear this is the first time we see this pamphlet. But it's just our writings, they're the truth. Why is he so upset? You truly don't understand how harmful this is, do you? It's not true. No, Archbishop Fasati is being Father Bosco was right. Search him well. Me. I did not commit. Please, Giovanni. Just who do you think you're fooling? This contains precise indications, things that only the two of us knew about. This is irrefutable evidence. I assure you. What? Do you realize that by publicizing these issues, you've made the church seem divided, and you have ridiculed my authority in the eyes of the people? Our enemies must be rejoicing. Even though I had nothing to do with it, this pains me deeply. Believe me, Lorenzo. Eminency, Giovanni. I'm your archbishop. Don't you forget that. To be honest, eminency. I did not find in you the understanding a shepherd should have for his flock. You cannot think only of your society. You must begin to consider the position of the church as a whole. In the meantime, I had to take the necessary measures. Lorenzo. I suspend Giovanni Bosco's authorization to hold spiritual exercises, to confess, and to celebrate Holy Mass. These measures are of the utmost gravity. That pamphlet is a pretext. The humiliations and the sorrows he's inflicting upon me are his response to my refusal to obey. I really don't know what to do. To obey means giving up my dearest sons to him. <laughs> but if I don't, everything I built is coming to an end. What should I do, Father Cafaso? Request the intervention of the Holy Father. Yes, that's what I will do. Father Cafaso has arrived. He has a letter from the Pope. Render in 
justice. Reverend Father Bosco, it is with some apprehension that we receive the news of your differences of opinion with His Eminency Cardinal Fassati, the Archbishop of Turin. You know how close we keep the work your oratory is doing for poor and abandoned boys in our hearts, but we are sad to say that it'll have to take second place, as our current prerogative is to remind you of your vote of obedience. I therefore ask you to submit to Cardinal Fassati's will, even when his projects regarding your pastoral mission should differ from yours. that he be spared. I will recite the rosary every day. I will eat nothing but bread and water for an entire year. So will I, for the rest of my life. I offer you conversion for what it's worth.
my life. But rest assured, from now on, I will devote it entirely to yeah! you. Sorry for having sinned. And I beg forgiveness. And I submit myself to your will in all humility. wholeheartedly grant to Giovanni Bosco the forgiveness he implores. It was just delivered now. Then he truly had nothing to do with it. We accepted the sacrifice of obedience the Lord requested from us, and we understood that we must continue on our path as Salzians in humbleness, obedience, and sons in the arms of our Father. Our path is a path of roses, but also of thorns, and this is the right path, the path the Lord has shown us, and we shall walk along it together. The Holy Father has acknowledged our direct accountability to him. The Congregation of Salzians has been approved. Good morning, boys. 
What are your names? Uh, what are you doing? Nothing. Come on, let's go. Pay him no attention. Go ahead. So, who are you? Patronic Tommaso from Osti. <laughs> How old are you, Patronic Tommaso from Osti? Eleven. And do you have a family? I have my mother, but I'm without a father. I'm Father Bosco. Come to my oratory. We play games, we do catechism, and there are lots of snacks. Would you like to come? Yes, if I can eat. Wonderful. Come with me. Come on. And remember, no one on this earth is without a father. Giovanni Cagliaro was appointed bishop of Patagonia in 1884 and cardinal in 1915. Michele Rua was Father Bosco's first successor in the head of the sales hands. Carlo Buzzetti became a building contractor. Giuseppe Buzzetti stayed at the oratory as a lay salesman. Domenico Salvio was canonized in 1954. Father Bosco died in 1888 at the age of 72. He was canonized in 1934. When he died, there were 58 Salesian homes and 1,049 Salesians. Today, there are more than 16,000 Salesians and 1830 Salesians organizations in 128 countries all over the world.